This year, museum scientists have described and named over 350 new species, including some miniature frogs, no bigger than the size of a coin, to a bunch of stick insects from tropical Australia. But we're going to look at some of the older new species described this year. Both are armoured dinosaurs, and both have been unearthed in China. And these dinosaurs are telling researchers more about the early evolution of armoured dinosaurs during the Jurassic period some 200 to 145 million years ago. First up, we're going to take a look at the earliest and most complete armoured dinosaur ever discovered in Asia. I'm Professor Paul Barrett, and I'm one of the dinosaur specialists at the Natural History Museum. Over the last few months, I've been lucky enough to work with some Chinese colleagues on a new dinosaur that they discovered in Yunnan province in southern China that we have named as a new species called Yushisaurus. Yushisaurus is an early armoured dinosaur. The armoured dinosaurs form a group called Thyreophora, which means shield bearer, and is in reference to the many rows of armour plates and spikes that run along their body and would have been there for defence. We know some armoured dinosaurs quite well. Things like Stegosaurus from later in the Jurassic is a famous example of the group. But this is one that's actually much closer to the origin of the group, way back in time, nearer to its common ancestor. And so shows us how the features that we see more elaborately in things like stegosaurs and the tank-like ankylosaurs started their evolutionary journey. So this find is from about 190 million years ago, making it one of the earliest armoured dinosaurs that we know about. It's not the earliest armoured dinosaur. We also have other similar animals that we know from the UK and from Germany and the US. But what it does show is that these types of dinosaurs spread very quickly all over the world within only a few million years of their origin. This animal was alive at a time when a supercontinent called Pangaea, that included all of the continents, started to split apart. But nevertheless, there were still land connections between many of the different continents that we would recognise today. And these connections allowed the ancestors of Yushishaurus to move backwards and forwards and allowed them to colonise the area that then became China. We know a lot about the evolution of armoured dinosaurs in other parts of the world. Up until now, surprisingly, China has not given us very much of this early armoured dinosaur record. But Yushisaurus fills that gap, providing us with the first really good early armoured dinosaur material from the entire Asian continent. While Yushisaurus might be the oldest, our next armoured dinosaur is telling researchers more about the early evolution of stegosaurs and why China could be so important in finding out more about the origins of this group during the Middle Jurassic. I'm Dr. Susie Maidment, and I'm a dinosaur researcher here at the Natural History Museum. This year, we described a new stegosaur, um, Bashanosaurus primitivus, and it's from China. It's from a town in China called Chongqing, and the specimen is Middle Jurassic in age. It's around 167 million years old, and that makes it one of the oldest stegosaurs that we know. And that's why its species name is Primitivus. It's one of the oldest, but actually on the family tree, it's one of the earliest branching stegosaurs as well. So it's one of the most primitive stegosaurs we know. We don't have a complete skeleton of Bashanosaurus, so we don't have a really good idea of all of its body shape, but it was certainly a bit smaller than Stegosaurus and it had much smaller plates and they were probably a bit more spine-like. So st some of Stegosaurus's plates are up to a meter in size and they're very, very, very thin. But Bashanosaurus's are much more like spines and they were maybe only 20 or 30 centimetres in size. Dinosaurs from the Middle Jurassic are really important to help us understand how we went from sort of two-legged animals that had forelimbs modified for grasping and that were quite small to the whole diversity of herbivores that we see by the time we get to the Upper Jurassic. So the Middle Jurassic is this really critical time where we see all of these groups of dinosaurs radiating um, and really diversifying. Um, and Bashanosaurus comes right from this time period. And that's why it's so interesting because it's kind of acting like a bridge between those um, much older, more primitive armored dinosaurs that we're seeing from places like Charmouth in Dorset to things like Stegosaurus from the Upper Jurassic and also a whole bunch of European Stegosaurs that we know as well. So we know quite a lot about their anatomy. Um, we don't have a good idea of these middle Jurassic ones and Bashanosaurus is really kind of the first step in helping us to understand that. So the Middle Jurassic is this really critical time um, to help us understand the diversity of all of these different dinosaurs and how that diversity kind of first established itself. But the problem is in Europe and North America, which are the areas where we've sampled the fossil record the best, we actually have only marine deposits from the Middle Jurassic. So we don't have loads of Middle Jurassic dinosaurs because dinosaurs lived on land. So if we want to understand 
the early evolution and radiation of these groups of dinosaurs, we need to go and look for areas of the Earth where we have middle Jurassic deposits that were deposited on la land. And Sichuan province in China, um, and particularly these two formations, the upper and the lower Shaximao formations, are stuffed full of middle Jurassic animals. And that's really, really, really critical and important in helping us understand um, this early evolution um, of all of these different groups. China has, uh, it's a very large country. It has a huge amount of rock outcrop. Um, and that means the potential to find dinosaurs there is really, really high. But these aren't the only new dinosaurs described by museum scientists this year. Professor Anjali Goswami was involved in describing a new species of carnivorous dinosaur with tiny arms from Argentina. Named Guimesia, it would have stalked what is now South America some 70 million years ago, and is helping the scientists understand how this part of the world changed in response to the asteroid that wiped the dinosaurs out. These are just a tiny fraction of the new species described this year, and with lots of field work and study, it is more than likely that there will be more new dinosaurs in the years to come.